what is up YouTube, Bucket Help and or the Pilot Guy here. Today I'll be showing you how to set up a bucket server on a fresh new CentOS server that you might have just bought. Uh, this will go from start to finish, so if there are some steps, which there will be multiple of them, that you have already done. Um, you all can just skip them. I'll throw up an annotation in the top right of the screen in case you need it. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is install Java. So go ahead and open up Putty. Uh, Putty is a SSH or program that will launch into your server's console. I'll put a link to it in the description if you don't have it. So what you want to do now is open up Putty. I have it open right here. Put in your host name or IP address, put in the port, and hit SSH if you haven't already. Then go ahead and click open. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already logged in. Once you hit open, you should come up with a screen like this. Uh, it should ask for your username and password. Put in the username and password the host gave to you. It should be the username root, and the password will be whatever the password is. So go ahead and log into your server here. Now set that to the side, and we'll need to download something. So you'll want to download the Linux for Java, or Java for Linux, RPM. So I'll put this link in the description. Once you get here, hit Linux RPM or Linux x64 RPM. It really depends on what type of server you have. If it's a 32-bit processor, you'll want to go for the RPM. If it's a 64-bit processor, you'll want to go for the 64 RPM. I have a 64-bit processor, so I've downloaded this one. I have it already here in this file. So I'll go ahead and right hit clear. I'll hit cut, right? Oh, excuse me, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Now I'll open up FileZilla. FileZilla is a different program that will connect you to your server via FTP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my host here, which is my IP address. I'm going to put my username, and my password should be root and whatever password it is. Uh, port, you'll want to make sure you put 22 here. I've already have my servers before, so I will just hit this one here. Oh, excuse me, that is the wrong one. All right, so this is our first login to the server. We have our main root folder here. So what you want to do is go ahead and double click this. You'll be in the main server file. Go to USR, and then we'll create a file. So we'll right click, create a directory, do Java. So this is our new file, pretty fancy. Uh, I'll go ahead and upload that file now. So I'll just drag it on here, or you could locate it in the browser in the program itself, and drag it in. So it's going to take a little bit of time to upload, so I'll come back when it does. Alright, it's been updated, which is pretty cool. So now we want to open up that console again, back to my Ruta logo host thing, and we'll want to put in a certain command or stringy command, I guess. So first thing we'll want to do is type cd dot dot. Then we'll type cd usr, and then cd java. cd is basically the way you navigate around files. So cd dot dot goes up a file, cd name goes into the file. Talk about assuming it's a folder. So now we're in the java folder, same folder for both of these here. Uh, we'll want to put in a certain command, so I'll put this in the description. We'll do rpm dash ivh, and then we'll put in the package name, so jre dash 7u25 dash linux dash x64, and make sure we get put rpm at the last part, and that should work. So now it's installing, and it's installed. So let's see, I do not remember if a command worked. That is correct, so there you go, there's your Java. Uh, it's installed. 
So that's the first step. Good job. And on to the second step. All right, now on to step three. So first thing we'll need to do for step three, which is, by the way, configuring your server's firewall, is opening up fire firewall configuration. So we'll type bi slash etc slash config, sys config slash ip tables. It's right up there. Uh, see it. Press enter, and you're going to a little editor. Uh, for me, or at least on my side, you should see uh, blank or black or whatever color I put. As I, this is my firewall, and I don't want that public. But this is the editor for the firewall file. Um, so yours may be blank if you have a new server, or it may not. Uh, I've put up a, an example firewall in the description you can use if it's blank, and if it's not blank, you can still use part of the firewall to open up the correct ports. Uh, so to do that, if you're new to VI Editor, is you want to press I, copy that from the description, and once you've pressed I, right-click with your green block on the first little space in the top left of your console, and it should paste it all in there. Make sure it's pasted correctly. Press Escape, and then colon, or shift colon, which is colon, and then WQ. Press enter, and it will save it. Now all you need to do is do this simple command. So service IP tables restart. That will put your new firewall in working. If everything went well, then you should have four OKs there, or a certain amount of OKs and no apparent errors. So that's it. That's step two. Is uh, make it the firewall. All right. So on to part three. Part three is pretty simple. It's a uh, two things we gotta do is create a user for the Minecraft server to make sure it's more secure and it's not run by the account, and install a quick little program which is much easier to install than Java was. So that's called screen. So we'll type yum install screen. Make sure you're in for this in your root putty. Press enter. And it should install screen for you. Assuming you didn't already have it installed like I did. It's telling me I've already installed it. Um next thing we'll do or we'll do is create the user that will run the Minecraft server. So type user add Minecraft or no capitals uh, preference of mine. Uh, don't use capitals if you don't need to. So user add Minecraft. Uh, you can put whatever username you want, but that's fine. Then you're going to type PASSWD and then the username. So I'll put whatever password I want. So I'm going to put this password. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Of course, this uh, account will be deleted by the time the video goes up anyways. So now you've created your user, and you've installed the screen. Uh, that's all for step four, pretty simple, or step three, pretty simple. Now on to step four. All right, so step four is setting up the actual server itself. So first thing we want to do is open up our internet browser. Go over to dl.bucket.org. I would uh, assume you know what that is. If not, I'll link it in the description. And download the version of Bucket you want. Uh, I personally uh, went to the alternate versions and got the 1.6 beta build. Or uh, alpha build, I guess. Though you can get whichever version you like. I've already downloaded that here. So once I have that in my downloads folder, I'm going to want to rename that to what preferably crap bucket jar just so you know which jar it is and afterwards i'm going to open filezilla back up i'm going to click dot dot if that would looks like i will need to reconnect so i will do that there we go now i'll go to at least click dot dot back into your in this directory with all these folders like bin boot dev etc uh 
click, double click on home to open up home, then double click on Minecraft to open up Minecraft. Now you'll have a folder with these three folders, just leave those. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag that graph bucket folder over here into my files and let it upload. Should be pretty quick upload. Uh, you can see the progress down here if you didn't know. So let's wait a few seconds for that. And while I'm at it, you can, if you'd like, create a folder in here and call it MC server or whatever. I, I prefer not to though. So now we have the craft bucket jar right here. What we'll want to do is go back into root, type cd dot dot back into your um basically right next to root at localhost or whatever your says uh it should there should be a little slash. Uh, so now I'll type cd home, then cd minecraft, whatever username you made. Now we're in the same file as we are in FileZilla. Uh, so what we'll want to do what we'll want to do now is type screen dash s minecraft. Very simple. Uh, so now we have our screen and screen is basically a way to run your Minecraft server on screen or Basically, it won't turn off whenever you turn off your console. So, all I need to do now is type Java, once I'm in that screen, dash jar, craft bucket, dot jar. Assuming you named it that, press enter. And there we go. So, it's going to load up our first batch here, I suppose. So as you can see, here's our console. Uh, that's how you'll be getting in console from now on. Um, preferably though, once you run it this first time, you're gonna to wanna to type control C. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna type CD dot dot again, then chmod dash R 777, and then the file name. So the file name my server in is Minecraft. So I'm gonna do that. Excuse me. Looks like I had caps lock on. Dash R. Uh, preferably, you probably should not do 777 permissions if you, your machine is shared by other people. Uh, at least your installation of CentOS. Uh, if it's not, then 777 is your easiest bet. Uh, make sure that R is capitalized, by the way, or it will not work correctly. So now we're done with that. Where we can leave this open, but we no longer need this anymore. So let's jump into my this is my putty again. I'll log in as Minecraft, which is my user I created. Put in the password, and my server is already in this default folder. See, when you log into the user, it's going to take you to the home slash Minecraft folder because that is the user's uh, default folder. So pretty simple. Make sure that's done correctly. Um, now that you're in the Minecraft user, make sure you're in the folder that the server is in. Type screen dash s Minecraft. And now you simply can do dava dash jar craft bucket dot jar. And you'll want to run it on this user just so people don't try to break into your server and mess with your root account because that's the worst possible thing that could theoretically happen to your server. So that's it, you're done. Um if you want to stop the server obviously you just press you just type in stop in the console. Or I can start up the server again. And if you want to get out of the screen you type control or A D. So control hold control then hold A and then press D or control A D. You have to type it fast. Um, you may not have to hold A depending on what you're using. But now I'm detached from the screen. So say I want to log back into the console. It's pretty simple. Um, make sure you're logged into the Minecraft user. If you're in the root user, it will not let you resume the screen or log the console. So you type screen dash list. 
So we named it Minecraft. Screen dash ash Minecraft makes the screen call itself Minecraft. Uh, if you don't put the dash s Minecraft at the end, that's fine, though it won't be named Minecraft. So when I put the dash s, I can type screen dash r, this is the resume command, and then I'll type Minecraft. And there I am, my console. If I didn't put the dash s command, I'd have to type screen dash list, then I'd find that number, which is behind Minecraft, and I type screen dash r 18365. And now I'm back in console, the same. So that's pretty much it. That's how you set up a bucket server on a CentOS dedicated server. All right, so I hope you guys liked the video and helped you out. Uh, if you have any questions, just throw them uh, in the comments, or I'll be more likely to answer them if you private message me. Um, until next time, guys, uh, rate, comment, and subscribe, and... I'll see you later.